Hello everyone, welcome to Agile Frank Mint, your partner in education. Today we'll be looking at Talentex 2024 sample question paper. Today we'll be covering class 9 science which are physics, chemistry and biology. Let's begin. First question. The diagram shows the relative strengths of the gravitational force for planets of different masses. The size of each planet represents the planet's relative mass. The arrow length indicates the relative amount of gravitational pull that each planet would exert on an astronaut in space. The relationship between the mass of the planets, M, and the relative strength of their gravitational pull is. So, in this question, we have to find a relation between the mass of the planets and their gravitational pull. So, over here, we can see that Mercury is small and the, uh, the, 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 the size of Mercury, Mercury is small as compared to the other planets and, and, that, and that's why the amount of gravitational pull is also low. While if we look at Jupiter, the, uh, its mass is very high and also is the gravitational pull. Now if we have to express then this in numerical form, then we have to look at Newton's law of gravitation. Now this states that the gravitational force is equal to the ma mass 1 into mass 2 divided by the distance squared. So both of these are the mass of objects. This is the gravitational force. Now, uh, if we have to look at something which is, which is common, now we can see that the distance between the astronaut and the planet in all cases are the same. The distance is the same. So that means if you had to check for each planet, this R square will remain the same. And so will M1. M1 will also remain constant because M1 is the mass of the astronaut. In here we are looking at the uh, same astronaut in each case uh, with their relative gravitational force with each planet. So the only thing which varies is the force of gravitation and uh, the mass. So over here, if we increase mass, and since it is in the numerator, that means that the force of gravitational for the gravitational force will also increase. This means that if we increase mass, the uh, the gravitational force increases. So this means that uh, the gravitational force is directly proportional to m m square uh, anything like that. It can never be indirectly proportional to m. So that's why we can cancel the second and fourth option, which says that F, uh, the force, is indirectly proportional to 1 by m or 1 by m square. Now, another thing. Over here, m does not have an exponent. It's not m squared. So, uh, if m is 1 and m1, uh, if m is m2 is 1, then the force of gravity will be m1 by r2. If m2 is 2, then uh, the gravitational force will be 2 m1 by r2. So we can see that it increases by the same amount and not by squaring them. So that's why option 3 is also incorrect since it says that the gravitational, fo the gravitational force is directly proportional to m squared, which is not the case. So option 1, the gravitational force is directly proportional to M is the correct answer in this question.
Next question on chemistry. Two liquids A and B have the same boiling point. Liquid A is kept at sea level and liquid B is kept at the mountain top. Which of the following is the correct observation on heating? So, uh, this question deals with the boiling point of the A and B. In the question it says that both of them have the same boiling point. Now what does this mean? This means that it will, uh, both of them would have, would need the same amount of energy to convert liquid into gas. So the same amount of energy would be required to convert them. And if we are to look at the definition of boiling point, then uh, the boiling point is the amount of, let me say, the, uh, the conversion, the conversion of liquid to gas at atmospheric pressure, normal atmospheric pressure. So there will be some pressure. But in order to conquer that pressure, it will reach some boiling point so that the liquid, the space between the particles would uh, increase and the liquid would convert into gas. Now this uh, is the atmos atmospheric pressure, normal atmospheric pressure. Now if we look at the uh, next sentence, it says that liquid A is kept at sea level and B is kept at mountain top. Now what is the difference between uh, liquid? Uh, one thing kept at sea level and one thing at the mountain top. Now if we see in the sea level, it has the normal atmospheric pressure. Now if we look at the liquid at the mountain top, uh, it would have lower atmospheric pressure. Now, this is the key to answering this question. Now let's say that this is the liquid we're talking about and if it's at normal atmospheric pressure then it would require some amount of energy to conquer it the same amount of energy and to conquer the atmospheric pressure however if If there is less atmospheric pressure, then we would need less amount of energy to conquer it and convert to gas. Less amount of energy to increase the intermolecular space. So that means uh, the boiling point would decrease. Because if uh, to, convert, uh, to convert the liquid to gas, we only need low amount of kinetic energy. And low amount of ki uh, and lower the temperature, lower is the kinetic energy. So the uh, liquid B would have a lower boiling point. Boiling point. Now, what does this mean? This means that this uh, liquid B would convert into gas faster or at a lower temperature. Now, if we look at the options. Uh, we can cancel the option 4 cannot be determined because we just determine what uh, what will be what would happen on heating what would happen to both liquid a and liquid B and li uh, option 3 is incorrect because it says that both a and B boils at the same temperature which is false we've just found out that B boils at a lower temperature and that's why option 1 is incorrect which, which says liquid a boils at lower temperature than B so the correct answer for this question is liquid B boils at lower temperature than A, as concluded. Next question, or the last question. The plasma membrane of an animal cell consists of 1. Proteins, lipids and cellulose 2. Lipids, proteins and carbohydrates 3. Proteins, pectin and cellulose 4. Hemicellulose, proteins and lipids Now, over here we have to look at what does the plasma membrane consists of. Now, this many scientists have tried to figure out and the most perfect model is the fluid mosaic model 
which was discovered or proposed by two scientists, Singer and Nicholson. Now, the fluid mosaic model consists of this would approx uh, would almost be the fluid mosaic model in a two D format. So these are different the three types of things that are present in the uh, plasma membrane uh, and then there are these things which and yeah and some of them on the protein so in this fluid mosaic model, it consists of proteins. This this big block is a protein, uh, and these are phospholipids, nothing but lipids or fats. And the small things which are attached to each of them are the carbohydrates. So, we can see, if you look at the options, option 1 says proteins, lipids, and cellulose. Cellulose is not correct. Cellulose is only found in the uh, cell wall of plants, and it's not part of the plasma membrane of an animal cell. Option 1 is incorrect. And option 2 uh, is the correct option. It says lipids, proteins, and carbohydrates. Lipids, proteins, and carbohydrates. Option 3, if you look at the other options, option 3 says proteins, pectin, and cellulose, completely different, uh, except for proteins. And option 4 says hem hemicellulose, proteins, and lipids, which is also not the correct option. So option 2, lipids, proteins, and carbohydrates are what the pl plasma membrane of an animal cell consists of. Now that's all folks, we hope you found it interesting. For more such videos, uh, uh, Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Agile Rank Mate. Until the next episode, take care, stay safe, ta-ta for now.